What's going on, everybody? Your two favorite horror reviewers are back tonight. We've got a good one for you. We're reviewing a movie, a sequel to a movie that came out 36 years ago. One that we all remember. It's all near and dear to our hearts. It starred Michael Keaton as the ghost with the most. And it's showtime. So me and Uncle Logan here are going to review the sequel. It's called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Don't you say it one more time. Beetlejuice. <laughs> Spill your guts. Who wants to go first? All right, I will. See, I'm willing to do the work. <laughs> do that thing from my dream. Really more nightmare material. Confronting the unknown, conquering your fears. <laughs> There's nothing harder. <laughs> What the f- Two ghosts with the Moses are back. Of course, we're talking about the sequel that just hit cinemas across the globe. It's killing at the box office, making a lot of money. Very worried about this movie. You know, the original, you know, Tim Burton in his prime, basically. Of course, Michael Keaton. Them working together always works. And this original was so fantastic. I rewatched it before watching the sequel. Refresh my memory. And it's a worthy sequel for sure. Hell yeah. Yeah, definitely worried about this. You know, were they just going to try to squeeze out some extra some extra bucks here? Warner Brothers playing with another franchise. We've seen a lot of these legacy sequels come and go along the years. And a lot of the times really not live up to and honor the first movie that came before it. Kind of a cash grab. We're both happy to say that this movie is not that. It's, it's a worthy follow-up. And uh, impressive, you know, it was nearly 40 years ago. Uh, so, yeah, Tim Burton's back. Michael Keaton's back. Everybody's a little older now, but uh, they slide back into these iconic roles. And this one all starts with a tragedy in the Dietz family. Of course, we have uh, Lydia Dietz, Winona Ryder's back. And we have Delia Dietz, Catherine O'Hara, the greats, of course. And then we this time we have the younger, uh, the younger daughter of Lydia, uh, played by Jenna Ortega, Astrid Dietz. And this story all revolves around the father, played by Jeffrey Jones in the original. Um, of course, you know, he had some pedophilia charges and, uh, you know, so he's been blacklisted. So they kill off his character in the beginning and it brings the family back to the iconic house and eventually leads to the return of the ghost with the most Beetlejuice. That's right. Three generations of the Dietz family returning back to Winter River, Vermont. Love this town. Not much has changed there. Really great shots, opening shots in the movie, of course, of this Town returning to this town, of course, the Danny Elfman score was just like the original. Really brings back that atmosphere and gets you setting the the right path here. Watching this movie, re- returning really cool setup. I will say that with, of course, the father passing away, them returning to deal with that, having to do with going back to the house, and of course, reintroducing a lot of these familiar characters behind me. Yeah, it was interesting catching up with Lydia and seeing what she was doing now. She's a host of a TV show where she talks about ghosts. So it fits in perfectly with her character. She is involved romantically with uh, one of the producers, I believe of the show played by Justin Thoreau. Uh, His name was Rory in the film. And uh, Rory has this idea that, uh, you know, on the backdrop of this family funeral that they've, uh, you know, that's brought the family together. And they're back at the house and he thinks, you know, what better time than now to propose and pop the question to old Lydia, will you marry me? (laughs) (laughs) So ridiculous. So ridiculous. Justin Thoreau was such a punchable face in the movie. He did a great job playing that slimy scumbag you can't trust. But really, you know, that's he's the love interest of Lydia. They return back to the house and all he cares about is money and her career. And of course, it reintroduces Beetlejuice himself, played by Michael Keaton, hasn't lost his step in almost 40 years, a little older now, but he returns in his character, 
100% really hilarious, really great scenes. Doesn't have as much energy as the first movie, and that's okay, but he was so great. Had a huge presence in the film. He's not like a huge character, but he shows up a decent amount in the movie. Yeah, for sure. They don't, they're not throwing it at us like, okay, we're just going to give you two hours of the character of Beetlejuice. He's used liberally in the film, but it always serves a purpose for the plot of the film. Uh, you know, this time we have uh, Beetlejuice's backstory. We finally find out how he became a ghost and it's tied into Dolores, uh, the love of his life. Basically, you find out how he dies, which is pretty interesting. And then, you know, Dolores is resurrected in the film and we find out she's a soul sucker. So that kind of gets the, the story moving forward. Um, but uh, the main main focus of the film is on Astrid, Jenna Ortega's character. Um, she's, you know, had enough of what's going on. Everybody was brought back for the funeral. Now her mom's probably going to get remarried here. She's had enough. She rides off on this bike. And that's where the first kind of twist happened for me because kind of figured it was going to go in one direction and kind of goes off into a different direction there. She ends up uh, meeting this kid. Um, who's up in a tree house, a kid around her age, you know, teenager, you know, young adult, and they uh, strike up a relationship. And, uh, you know, it kind of goes from there. We don't want to say too much about the specifics of this, because this is a movie that you need to see on your own and find out what's going to happen for the first time watching it. You know, it's it was a cool story. I liked what they did here. It was an interesting way to bring everybody back and to revisit the afterlife and to see some of those characters you know, waiting in line still. We had Bob, you know, Beetlejuice's right-hand man with the shrunken head. Had a lot of funny scenes there. Uh, we saw another uh, Tim Burton favorite return, Danny DeVito playing a character, janitor <laughs> up there in the afterlife uh, who comes into contact with Dolores. But yeah, a lot of that same feeling that you had in Beetlejuice, like you mentioned, the Danny Elfman score, the, the credits, the, you know, just the look of the credits were the same kind of uh, font and everything as the beginning. It had that same kind of feel. It brought you back to this same house and this same, you know, afterlife that we knew from the first one. And it's done well. You know, everybody's having a great time. You can tell Michael Keaton is loving being back as this character. He gets to do a lot of funny things with this character and be outlandish. And, you know, now that he's older, he um, is, you know, having scenes with young Astrid. So it's interesting to see the dynamic there. You know, it was all those years ago, he was having scenes with Lydia. And now it's the next generation of uh, Deets with Astrid that he's coming into contact here. And also having scenes with Delia, Catherine O'Hara's character, who also had a great performance in this film. And it was great seeing her after all these years dealing with the tragedy of losing her husband and seeing where she's at in her career and what she's doing. And just, it was just a, a really fun movie being reunited with all these characters again and going back to this universe and seeing Tim Burton with the same kind of practical effects and uh, just having a great time. And it looked like everybody had a blast with this movie and that's what's translated to it doing so well at the box office. You know, it's been number one is it's first couple of weeks out. It's, you know, went past and surpassed all expectations as far as that. And we shall see, maybe this will, you know, generate a, a third movie who knows what could happen when it makes that kind of money. So we'll have to see if we get back uh, to see these characters all together again. What a huge surprise. Molly and I walked out after seeing it the second time, because the first time the theater started on fire 20 minutes in the movie. So I had to return the second <laughs> week. Both of us were super surprised leaving the theater. We're both, had smiles on her faces, had a great time, enjoyed these characters, enjoyed the ride, enjoyed the story. I think the script is really great in this movie. I actually cared about these characters, seeing what they're up to, what they're going through. Had a lot of heart, had a lot to do with family, a lot of good messages in this, not just the crazy silliness. There's there's some good writing in this, good writing of characters. Jenna Ortega playing Astrid, I thought she was a really great addition to this ensemble. Of course, when Winona Ryder, Michael Keaton, Catherine O'Hara are always amazing. They're really damn good in this movie. I was really impressed. Only minor nitpick for me was the makeup work on Beetlejuice looked a little weird. I'm not sure V. Neil did the makeup in this movie. Just one little thing I noticed, but not major, you know, 
major issue. Just a little thing I noticed. Maybe the camera work, you know, the technology is a lot better now. It's clear. You can see Beetlejuice. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But everything else is amazing. Set design, costume design. I love the practical effects. Return to form for Tim Burton. First movie I've really enjoyed from this director in over 20 years. Like, I just had a great time with it. Can't wait to rewatch this and pick it up for the home collection. Had a really great time at Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Check it out. If you've not seen it yet, definitely worth your time. And a movie you definitely need to watch during the Halloween season with your spooky family. That being said, I'm giving Tim Burton's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Michael Keaton herpeses. Yeah, I went and saw this with my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and we all had a great time with this. We were all... Uh, you know, really happy when we left the theater, much like you with smiles on our faces, talking about how much we really enjoyed seeing these characters again and, you know, how much fun we just had. Uh, just a minor nitpick for me, the character of Dolores wasn't really fleshed out too much. Like they introduced her in the beginning. She was kind of uh, uh, the backdrop character. Another character worth mentioning that we didn't mention was Willem Dafoe's Wolf. It was cool seeing him as that character. He's kind of like this over the top kind of detective character in the movie. Um, there's a lot of great little Easter eggs from the first film. So keep your eyes open throughout this film, the sandworms back. And uh, you see some other things that'll, uh, yeah, you'll remember from the first movie. So with that being said, it was uh, a damn good sequel. Uh, happy to see this and uh, we definitely will be picking this up for the collection, no doubt. So with that being said, I'm going to give Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I'm going to give it a four out of five Bob hair pieces. I want to hear from all you wild ghouls out there. What did you like about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite horror film of 2024? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to stab, subscribe. Also, check out these soul suckers on Facebook, X, and Instagram, and our website, cinefells.com, for the latest, greatest TV, movie, news, and horror reviews. We did it. We reviewed the sequel to Beetlejuice for the 31 Days of Horror. Also, make sure to check out uh, Uncle Kevin and Uncle Bob's review of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. You can watch their take on it, too. Uh, we're releasing ours for the 31 Days of Horror. They have have already done theirs, so make sure to check back and watch their review, too. Uh, so thank you guys so much for tuning in for another spooky edition of the 31 Days of Horror. And these two wild boys will be back for more 31 Days of Horror very soon. So until that time, I'm Uncle Henry Hill. And I'm Catherine O'Hare signing out until the next <laughs> review for 31 Days of Horror. Cheers! <laughs>